What's an occupation you're sure no one enjoys doing? I worked one whole day in an onion processing and packing plant. Nobody and I mean nobody liked that job. When I showed up they told me it'd get used to the crying and it would go away. That was a lie. And when it's that many onions you're not just crying. You can't open your eyes and you can feel it in your sinuses and tear ducts. All the while you're trying to look out for forklifts in a pretty tight-knit warehouse. The forklifts are moving fast because the plant just has to keep processing. If you were lucky you would just do cold packing but generally you would be working an assembly line that chopped the onions. Never went back. Leaving my insurance job in two months to pursue a career in law. Can confirm insurance is garbage. Edit. I work in PNC Insurance as a claims advisor for the second largest insurance provider in Canada. I got this position straight out of my undergrad and immediately realized the work and compensation do not match. During full workload, we are expected to handle 8100 files at any given time, and most files are easy. Some are more strenuous. In top of this there is massive pressure to provide excellent customer experience. I'm going back to school and pivoting my useless arts degree into something more substantial. Leaving after two years. Insurance paid me well but cold calling 40 hours a week only to end up writing people on sap. Sun or after hours and sometimes before hours was brutal. Salary plus commission pay I was making about 75k slash year as a captive for the in good hands demons at 18. Occasionally I was able to give myself the weekend off to party etc. Got into the music industry after then and despite being much more physical and less pay I loved it way more. Okay. I'm going to age myself here, but I did that job for AOL. It was our job when someone called to cancel their account to talk them out of it by any means necessary. We made 50 cents per account saved. The easiest calls by far were the ones where someone used made up info to sign up for their account and couldn't remember the BS they used, so they couldn't cancel their account. Got pretty boring looking up accounts for 123 Bonner Street, though. Couldn't be as bad as Audible. Com. Back when they were a standalone company, you buy a book. Dot. Great. It's yours. You're done. You subscribe to a monthly audio magazine. Dot. Good luck being able to cancel it. There was no button. Option to cancel it on the site. There was no phone number to call on the site. There was no contact email on the site. There was no snail mail mailing address on the site. I actually had to find a year old cached copy of the site on one of the historical internet sites. Dot. Just to get the phone number to call. When I called and explained that I wanted to cancel, the first question they asked. How did you get this number? I never subscribed to anything again. I had to mail my cancellation in by registered mail. Couldn't cancel in person. The cancellation was effective 10 business days after they received your notice of cancellation. I mailed mine in time for it to coincide with my annual billing date, which was the contract. However what they said was you need to give them 90 days notice of cancellation even if it was after your contract term. Effectively the wording of their contract, in 6 point font, said not to rely on any verbal or other communications. The contract was the only thing that mattered. And even though the contract said I'd purchase the 2 year plan, I had to give 90 days plus 10 business days notice, rounded up to the next bill date. And I couldn't give that notice until after my term ended. So even though my contract term was two years, the minimum I would be charged for was two years and four months. I had to fight quite hard and threaten one of those go public type deals for them to finally relent. And they only said they'd do that because I was moving to a city without one of their gyms. I ended up cancelling my credit cards so they couldn't keep charging me after my contract date which was three months after I'd moved anyways. The kicker was their finance company didn't update their system, so I received a call from a collection agent more than a full year after my cancellation date, saying I was a year behind on payments. I said my membership had been cancelled more than a year before, 
as I'd moved, and evidently someone didn't do the paperwork. He said it was my responsibility to contact the gym and get them to sort things out. No point in going through the rest of the convo haha. It was a gym with the precious metal in its name. I'll never go back. Cancelled my 24 fitness membership remarkably easy. I had just been diagnosed with epilepsy and my driver's license had been suspended. Called, lady asked why and I told her I have seizures, cannot drive, and cannot actually even make it to a gym. Are you sure you wouldn't like to? Oh, suspend your membership? No, I'm not going to get better. Wow, okay, your membership is cancelled. Remarkably they have not come back and charged me again. Also I did actually get better with meds, so there is that too. I tried to cancel my gym membership due to COVID, told that I needed to do it by email, after the website had told me to go there in person. After the email they said I needed to reach them by phone and the person on the phone was the exact same person I had tried to cancel with in person. Then I threatened to sue them and voila, able to resolve everything in an instant. Isn't it great how far you can get on people's good when it's really something you can cancel immediately? My mother's fiber broke on her ATT connection. I called tax support and service to get it fixed. They tell me it would be three weeks to get someone out. I made the appointment and hung up. I called Spectrum the only other provider in her area and told them if they could get there faster we would switch. They said two days. So I called ATT back and told them if they wanted our business they had 24 hours to get there. I also might have told them the two service guys can fight to the fucking death. Well they both showed up the next morning but Spectrum won, and we had the ATT boxes and mowed them in a box to give the repair guy. Edit, I'm not sure the type of fiber she had but it was extremely slow. She had three TVs, phone and internet. If you had all the TVs on different channels he could barely do a FaceTime. If you were on a phone call you needed to turn off one TV at least to keep connection. This fiber was sticking out of a box on the wall and it had a little white shielded fiber that broke off. Spectrum has been rock solid and my remote software I use to keep her system clean and running is lightning fast now that she is on Spectrum. I used to move furniture for a rent to own furniture store. That includes delivering it, setting it up and taking it back when the people and their rental or can't pay for it. People who get rent to own furniture do not tend to be happy people. I repossessed a vacuum cleaner from a crying woman. I accidentally tore someone's, already owned, couch while repossessing a deep freeze. I removed the fridge from a house, and when we pulled it away from the wall, the wall was moving coated in roaches. I got bit in the ass from a pack of dogs trying to knock on someone's door who had been ignoring our bills and calls, prompting me to get a rabies vaccine. I repossessed a dryer from a woman who said it wasn't working anymore. But when we removed the lint trap it had a year's worth of lint layers stacked in it. She insisted that wasn't the problem, the dryer was broken. I was cleaning up a computer we repossessed from someone when a pair of enormous antennae appeared from the fan vent. We moved the computer into the box truck outside, set off a bug bomb, and closed the door. The next day we had to sweep a large carpet of bugs out of the truck. Never again. Saw that happen to a number. I was walking my dog. He was coming back from jogging. I wave. He waves. Smile on his face. He jogged past me. Ten seconds later I hear a groan and a thud. He had had a massive heart attack, and when he fell he hit his head on the edge of his front steps. Woman next door was a nurse and started CPR within 30 seconds. Ambulance arrived in minutes. He never regained consciousness, and he was a health nut, athletic, late 40s. He went from howdy neighbor to dead in under a minute. Really freaked me out. God bless you. I hired a task rabbit mover in NYC and this guy was a beast with a cargo van. He was built like the rock and held an Ikea two-seater couch with one arm while holding the door for me with the other. I'm a skinny Asian dude and just ran around propping doors open for him. 
and moving stuff into the hallway. I tipped him $50 because he somehow moved my entire studio in about two hours total. Whenever someone in the city is moving I tell them to use this guy. The work you guys do is well appreciated. Edit. Hey all. I just logged into my TaskRabbit account to try to get you all his info, and it looks like his account has been deactivated frown I don't see it in my previous taskers. Sorry. Staffing is always an issue, even with good pay people just don't want to do the work. Two men can handle most things with the proper tools and dollies. In the case of anything too heavy, like a large gun safe or a hot tub, for example, a larger crew will be arranged well in advance. Unless it is an emergency, every job is walked through before it is booked, so there are no surprises. Last time I hired movers I asked for a four-person crew. The person on the phone said I didn't need it and ordered me a two-person crew instead. The two people showed up, looked around and asked if I could help because this job was too big for two people. Movers are great, but I fucking hate the people working the phones for them now. It took the crew so long that it ended up costing $2.5,000 to move one city away. Worked for a company that specialized in third floor walk-ups in the Texas summers. We'd knock out three a day and then eat a gallon of ice cream and a pizza. It was bad but not the worst things I've done. We'd hire young hotshots that would start the day running up the stairs and quit by noon. Happened enough that we had a wagering system. To make it easier for us, be packed and ready. If they won't do a walkthrough explain everything extra heavy that needs to be moved. Safes, hot tubs, double door fridge, boulder collection, etc. When they show up, take them around the house quickly and explain what goes. Same on the other side. Tell us where you want this heavy ass thing as it comes off the truck before we get it halfway into the wrong spot. Books in smaller boxes. If you have a special request that's fine, but please stop telling us how to load the truck. It only slows us down. We do this daily and know what we are doing. For you, take the extra insurance. Dings and scratches happen. Most companies offer the basic state required minimum insurance in your fee and that only covers the cost of the damaged item by weight, not the replacement value. Yeah, that painting is worth $1000 but the free insurance you chose covers 0 0.40 cents per pound so here is your $3 insurance check. That said, you're fucking appreciated. We hired movers for our last move. And I swear I'm never doing it myself again. Back breaking labor for my out of shape pass for several days. Because God knows I'm never getting it all done in a day. Even if I box up the small stuff well ahead of time. Or drop a chunk of my savings to have some dudes with the proper tools and a big van do it all for me. I'll happily go with option 2 every time now worked as a mover in college when I was actually still in good shape. It was good money and I worked with some good people but man moving heavy ass objects with weird dimensions out of a third story apartment gets annoying quick. It was nice though when we would get a job to do a sorority house or something like that. I would be sore for days if I still did that job though. I think in the end there are quite few people who do. My grandpa owned a moving company for almost 30 years, just sold it onwards this summer actually, and if I learned something, it was that he loved his job. It was definitely everything to him. Granted his company didn't do much in country moves, but rather from our country to other European countries so the work included lot of, or even mostly just, traveling by truck around Europe. It was very clear he enjoyed it a lot. When I was 12, I actually got to go with him for a week-long trip where he did a move to London. It definitely was an experience. Quite frankly if it wasn't for my grandma's health dropping and her needing him at home he wouldn't had quit either. Like for real. The whole family has been trying to make him stop for years now as he is getting quite old and still insist on carrying all the stuff and doing his job. He wouldn't stay still for long times either. 
every now and then would be back home for a weekend maybe. While it is a tough job, it definitely can be something that some people enjoy doing. I worked as a mover for exactly one week, it sucked, and half the movers quit in that short time, many of them because of payroll fuck-ups. Side note to businesses, never ever fuck up payroll. It's the fastest route to loan morale and turnover. Boss tried to get me to stay, promising his change my mind when the check came in. I quit anyway and was pretty disappointed in my check when it came through. Luckily, the team leader has been seriously helpful with training and whatnot. I try not to make it super obvious in front of customers that I'm fairly new. I'd hate to make them nervous considering they're probably already overwhelmed from the craziness of moving. I'm picking up fairly quickly though, when it comes to handling heavy furniture and rotating, adjusting as needed when going through doorways and stairways. If you don't mind, I gotta ask for your advice based on this situation I went through the other day on a job since you seem to be very experienced in this field. I did an apartment move the other day where the client had told my boss beforehand that there were only boxes and two couches in the living room, and this unit was the most disgusting living space I had ever seen. Garbage covering the entire floor, a smell so bad that I was on the constant verge of puking. The mentioned couch is covered with odd stains that smell even worse than the general odor. The boxes were laying sloppily on a mountain of dirty dishes and trash. The team leader tried to call our boss about the conditions but he said to just man up and get it done. We get the couches and boxes into the truck. My co-worker who was loading the truck felt genuinely ill from being boxed in with the odor and head back inside to let them know we're taking off for the spot they're moving into. They tell us that we still need to get the stuff in the two bedrooms which was absolutely not discussed with our boss. As we're told the boxes and couches in the living room, the crew and I check out the bedrooms and it's somehow even worse. The matrices and box springs are covered with shit piss and blood stains and a ton of extra furniture that was falling apart and of course filthy. We called our boss again about all of this additional stuff that they were throwing our way on the spot and he said to just finish the job. How do you handle jobs where the house slash apartment and or items such as mattresses are absolutely disgusting and unsanitary? I'd just like to know what you would have done because I felt like an absolute doormat for this customer considering he lied about the amount of furniture and the horrid conditions, along with my boss letting him do it and not having our back at all. The times that I've moved, the packers always come today or two days if you have a lot of stuff. Before, the movers are a different crew, but they were all from the same company, so you could choose to hire both or just the movers. On the unloading end, the movers were the unpackers though. I never had them unpack everything though. Just the big stuff like reassembling beds. After ride unpacked stuff, I could call the company and they'd come pick up the boxes and packing paper. Usually there's someone else moving who wants the boxes if you offer them up in a local group page. I had a student who was from a wealthy family that worked for the sewage department. He said his favorite job was going down into the sewers to clean the grates. He did this rather than go to university and join this family business. To keep his parents happy he would occasionally take night classes at the community college which is where we met. He was a really nice happy-go-lucky person. I worked one whole day and an onion processing and packing plant. Nobody and I mean nobody liked that job. When I showed up they told me it'd get used to the crying and it would go away. That was a lie. And when it's that many onions you're not just crying. You can't open your eyes and you can feel it in your sinuses and tear ducts. All the while you're trying to look out for forklifts in a pretty tight-knit warehouse. The forklifts are moving fast because the plant just has to keep processing. If you were lucky you would just do cold packing but generally you would be working an assembly line that chopped the onions. Never went back. I wear goggles just chopping onions in my own kitchen. I got them a few years ago for this exact purpose. 
because as I've gotten older that onion juice in my T-Rex feeling has gotten painful and I didn't want to exclude onions from my cooking. It's very effective and goggles aren't that expensive, I'd highly recommend this method.